Hey guys, uh, I'm Jose and welcome to this new tutorial of Unity. Um, so I'm going to continue where I left off in the last tutorial. We had a save game uh, going on uh, and we could just record some of these elements. I'm going to just uh, be looking at how to implement maybe a variation of, uh, of the creation of these cubes, let's say with a sphere and uh, with, um, with a plane maybe. Um, and how do we could just use, let's say, um, something like a, U, uh, a, like a UI um, to determine which is the kind of geometry that we're creating, right? Like some sort of inventory. Um, I'm going to be using a normal kind of uh, user interface that it's embedded in Unity, but I've been using lately uh, NGUI, which is um, really powerful and I really recommend it. Um, so, but because it's paid, um, I'm going to stick to some of the ideas with, with the Unity um, embedded uh, user interface elements, right? So let's get started. I'm going to just start by creating a two more prefabs here. Um, I'm going to call it my uh, sphere. And I'm going to create this one called prefab my plane. Right? So let's go ahead and create a new game object um, that's going to be a sphere. And we're going to just, again, similar to what we did before, create um, add a physics rigid body to this one. So we have a rigid body now, and it's my sphere, and I can delete that. And then my plane here, uh, component, create, other. I'm going to make a cube and scale it like this, right? Um, just because the plane might not work so well for the physics and so I'm gonna go into physics again and rigid body and then I'm gonna just drag this cube into my plane so I can delete that right so I have three prefabs now and if you remember our game manager here um, if we go into our script it has this script called create cubes right and what I'm gonna do is just copy this uh, object and I call it two and three, right? So now I have three game objects to pick from, and those three are updated. And I can use my sphere as a second game object and my plane as a third game object, right? So that's all good. Um, so now in the script, we could just basically, um, depending on something right we're going to just make a button to determine what that is um, we could let's say instantiate either the object one object two and object three right so let's i'm going to just open here the unity reference and i already kind of have it in the gui button right so um you could see some of the gui functions that we've done before um, in the previous tutorial but Let's just go through that again. Um, what we need here is just um, use the on GUI function first. So first of all, I'm going to just say on GUI, right? So something's going to happen here on GUI, and we're going to use labels and buttons and things like that. So I'm going to just copy this line of code as well here that says. Um, I like my if statements to have like curly brackets, I'm just the way I got used to it. So, so gonna leave it simple like that, and then I'm gonna put here print yes. Let's see what we have so far. We have a problem. And we need to provide something else, right? That's what I kind of removed. Let's check the documentation. So uh, a string, right? So that's the easiest way to just describe the button. So let's make a um, rectangle. <coughs> Sorry. And um, so button one. Let's see if that works. There we go. We have button one. 
right? So you see, we click it, we have a yes, right? So that's that's pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing that I want to do here is just maybe use a label. So if you go into GUI or GUI, uh, you can go and look for a label, right? And label is one of the most straightforward elements as well. So let's do a label saying um, so my label is going to say hello world. Um, okay, so we have hello world. Uh, let's put this one in forty. Right, so there we go. So we have hello world and a button. Right, so that's very straightforward. So bottom one. Um, so basically, what I want to do is just create a variable that is going to be so variable um, object to create. Right, and this is going to be from the type string. So basically, I'm going to just have a a string which is just a text. I'm gonna maybe create an initial string to start with, right? So it's gonna be none, nothing, or and basically I'm gonna be using this string object to display this in the label, right? So this is gonna show us what uh, kind of object we're gonna create, right? So I'm gonna say if I press this button. Basically, this um, object uh, to create it's gonna change to the string uh, my cube or create or just call it cube, right? So that's fairly simple. But uh, so So we have we start with none. If we press the button, it changes to Q, right? So that's all good. Um, so what I want to do here is just create three buttons instead of one, right? So I'm going to do a second one and a third one, and I need to just displace them a little bit, um, maybe 50 or 60 units down. So maybe this is going to be 100, and this is going to be 160. And this is gonna be called let's call it C. This is gonna be S for sphere, and this is gonna be P for plane. Right? So cube, sphere, and plane. And then the object to create is gonna be sphere. And this is gonna be uh, plane. Right? So we are kind of each one of these buttons is, is altering the very same variable, right? And the variable is string. And let's see how that works. And C, skew, sphere, or plane. Right? So that's a very simple way of just determining um, the one variable with three different buttons, right? So that's good. Um, so now we could basically put an if statement based on this string that we have, right? So um, what we're doing here uh, is saying instantiate this object, right? But um, we could say if object to create its cube, right? And here it's important that you're using the right kind of exactly the same um, spelling, right? And if you write this string differently, it's not gonna it's not gonna work, right? So. Um, I'm gonna say if object to create its cube, let's create object one, and otherwise um, we could just basically copy that three times, right? Um, and we could say what we want to do here is just this object to create is gonna be declared outside here, so a new object, and then. Let's just do it like this, right? 
just because we don't want to just have three variables, new object, and in that way, we don't alter the outcome. So sphere, if sphere, we could use object one, and uh, if we say plane. object 2, right? So knowing that object 1 is going to be the cube, object 2 is going to be the sphere, and object 3 is going to be the plane. So that should work. Let's see if we have any errors. Yes, we do. Uh, something's happening with the non-identifier object 1. All right, so, so that's object 2 and that's object 3. So let's go. Right, so we are in cube mode, and if we press C, we create a cube. If we press sphere, we create a sphere. And if we press P, and that's working very well. So great, I mean, I have a way of just changing. I'm pressing C in the keyboard, like maintaining the what we had before. I mean, you see that the spheres are not being kind of recorded, right? So. When, uh, just going back to the idea of like um, identifying the game objects that we are kind of we want to save. I, I'm going to delete all save data, right? so this way I just can get rid of data that I've saved before. Yes, I want to save that, uh, and then I can go to my prefabs and say, well, just keep track of this guy as well, and my sphere also prefab identifier. So now I should be able to have cubes that are recorded, spheres that are recorded, and planes that are recorded. And if I press P, I can save the game, create a bunch more, P, save the game, and then Whenever I play again, I could just go back and check on my scene and continue the physics, right? So in this way, I can basically switch between three different pieces of geometry. I mean, you can basically use as many pieces of geometry as you want um, to start kind of uh, loading a new screen and still saving the position. Um, useful for this kind of system would be to keep track I mean just keeping them in some sort of list but also we could um, display something on the screen you like you've created so many and that's just quite simple with a label as well you could just do a counter of, of objects um, I think we've done that already in one of the previous tutorials so refer to that how to do that uh, and each time that you basically create one, you can basically add one to the count, so you're displaying the amount of objects. Um, I mean, we could do it very quickly. Just so I'm gonna say here variable count and cubes. So. Whenever I create a cube, I'm going to say plus plus. So I'm counting cubes and then I'm going to displace, show the number of cubes, right? So pretty straightforward. I could put this in 50, something like that. <clears throat> Never. So we're getting an error in the line 42, there is this one, um, I can't seem to find it. Alright, so yeah, it's detecting this is an integer and it's expecting a string, so I could say uh, cubes plus that. So, yeah, so the number of cubes, if I create cubes, 
it's counting the number of cubes. If I do spheres, it doesn't count because I'm just uh, not counting. You see that I'm counting only when I create cubes, right? So I could just say. So you could do different counters for the different objects, and maybe that's useful for you um, to have a record of how much you've created. Um, so that's it for this one. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys soon.